Cryonics is a controversial science involving freezing human remains. Its believers hope that one day those remains can be brought back to life. Now, a former employee of America's largest cryonic center is speaking up, claiming that he witnessed bizarre and unbelievable acts while he was working there. Arizona-based Alcor is the worldwide leader in cryonics. Its lab is said to house corpses, including the remains of baseball great Ted Williams. Williams swings, and there's a long... Frozen to minus 321 degrees, all at a cost of about $120,000 each. Larry Johnson, a former chief operating officer at Alcor, says in a new book that Williams' corpse was mistakenly decapitated and gruesomely mistreated. Through internal documents, photos, and secretly recorded conversations obtained by Johnson, he also alleges the company participated in the premature deaths of two Alcor clients who were close to dying. So what, what, what did he do? Did he just... He killed her. Alcor denies any wrongdoing and released a statement about the claims made in Johnson's book. In part, it says, Alcor is a nonprofit organization, a pioneer in the field of cryonics, and categorically denies the false allegations contained in Mr. Johnson's book. And Larry Johnson is with us this morning. His controversial new book is called Frozen. He's with us live in the studio this morning. So you had an interesting and eclectic career, including being a trained uh, emergency medical technician. Why did you go to work at Cryon? Okay, yeah, like you said, I'd been a paramedic for about 25 years. Uh, very stressful business. Uh, I was on the on the edge of burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been interested in biological research. Right. And I saw this as an opportunity to, to get into that field. That's how I came about Alcor. Okay, so you go to work at Alcor, and typically what was their method for freezing these corpses? Typically what would happen is they would have a member uh, who's a member of Alcor uh, would uh, would pass away, mm -hmm. would die. Uh, they would bring that individual to the facility and begin the cool down process. Right. Uh, and depending on what option you would take depends on what they do to you. If you take the whole body option, they freeze your whole body. If you want just the head only option, they just freeze the head. So it was quite common for them to decapitate these corpses. Yes, that's correct. Right. Now, did you go to work there before Ted Williams was brought there or after? It was afterwards. I went to work there about six months after Ted was brought into that facility. Right. And you say, you allege that you saw his corpse being mishandled. What did you say? I, I saw his head. What happens is they they'd had his head in one, it looked like a freezer chest, it's called a cryostar, and there was, it was malfunctioning, there were some issues, so they wanted to move his head into another vessel to lower the temperature of his head down to minus 321 Fahrenheit. Right. So they they, uh, they went to put his head in that vessel. What you got to do is obviously the head's round. It's not going to set upright. So they got a tuna fish can. They put it in the bottom of that vessel. They set the head on top of the can and then fill the vessel with liquid nitrogen. Well, obviously, after two or three days of being in that state, when they pull you out, that can is stuck to the top of the head. Right. Uh, in Williams's case, that's exactly what happened. They pulled him out. Right. The tuna can was stuck to the top of his head. Right. A technician grabbed a wrench, a monkey wrench, took a swing at the <sighs> can, missed it, yeah. missed the can, all right, hit the head, draw back again, a second swing, hit the can, send it flying across the room. Gruesome. Gruesome. I, I've been a paramedic 25 years, and I've right. seen some pretty horrible things. When you saw that stuff, did you go to the head of Alcor? Did you go to po the police department, for instance, and say, there are, there's crazy stuff going on? I did go to the police. I right. did go to the police. I did uncover um, some, some incidents where there were some questionable deaths. Right. Um, I you allege in the book there were people were prematurely passed absolutely. on with the aid of Alcor employees. Absolutely. I have knowledge of two. I have solid evidence of one in mm. the form of uh, tape recordings. I, right. I wired myself to, to get that on tape that they were actually right. euthanized. So you went to the cops and what did the cops say? I went to the cops. I went. This actually occurred, this particular death occurred in L.A. Right. So I went to LAPD Homicide Division, turned the tapes over to uh, the homicide detectives. Right. They thought, this is great. This is a smoking gun. We're going to deal with this. A few days pass. I call them. They said, you know, this is 11 years old. We don't have the resources to deal with this. We're worried about the homicides that happened last night. Right. Alcor condemns the gross insensitivity of news media in, in presenting Johnson's stories as newsworthy, desecrating the memory of Ted Williams to the great upset of his family, who were devastated in a New York courtroom on Monday when learning sales of Johnson's book would go forward. Alcor says, we're clean, you're full of baloney, and to which you say... 
Uh, well, they're going to claim that because they've got an awful lot to hide, and it, it's in the book. Right. But the other thing you say, you've, you believe you, you've been living in fear. Fear of what? Uh, fear of my life. They're, they're fanatics. Uh, they've given me death threats. They've followed me from state to state, leaving notes on my vehicles. Basically saying, uh, you know, we're going to do away with you. You see, if this were all true, the thing that I find hard to believe, mm -hmm. that if this were really true, wouldn't prosecutors be beating down their doors to, 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 to find some sort of malfeasance if all of what you say is true? I, you know, I, you would think so. And I'm, I'm hoping now that now this book is out. This book allows me a certain level of protection, I hope. Mm -hmm. And I hope this does call the lawmakers' attention to what's going on in there. And they really do need to be investigated. Mm -hmm. Larry, thanks very much for being with us this morning. You can read an excerpt from Frozen on our website. That's earlyshow.cbsnews.com.